call this meeting to order? Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call. Here. Mr. Root. Here and dressed. Mr. White. Here. Mrs. Fascio. Here and dressed. Mrs. Kelly. Here and dressed. I'm Mr. Wright. Here. Uh, Not dressed. <laughs> uh, Jack. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner. One, it was posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office on May 9th, 2013. And it was emailed to the retrospect and the courier post on May 9th, 2008. Um, before we get to the, the resolution, uh, would Mr. Wright like to give us a, a brief summary? Sure, no problem. Um, what we'll be uh, asking council to consider and ratify tonight is the CWA, uh, which is the charcoal unit uh, contract for the period of January 1st, 2011 to June 30th, 2015. Um, and I'll, I'll explain the, the ending date as I go through the bullets. Uh, I will quickly go through the, I guess, the, the last letter I have from us to the, the union, just, uh, I guess, then just recapping the changes. Um, does everybody have a copy? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, on page six, under maintenance of standards, uh, section F the provisions of the contract will apply and be maintained at the highest standard and contract provisions will remain in effect until the successor collectively bargaining contract is implemented. That, that language was tweaked slightly um, at the request of our solicitor. Uh, on page 14 and 15. Um, Do you want to move that one microphone? I think maybe that's the case. Possibly. Yes. On um, page nine. Okay. In the second paragraph, if any employee believes that they have been treated unfairly, the employee is encouraged to use the borough's. Is that complaint or compliant? Complaint. Echo. Be sure it's complaint. Yeah, complaint policy and procedure. How do we do it? I would not. I would not be surprised if that was. A, I will. Well, that's not if we can correct the typo. But uh, I don't know if that carried forward that way. It's not bolded, so it's very I think possibly it, did it was originally. Was, I was looking at the two. And it okay. Was, I do have another question on page ten. Okay. The employees covered under this agreement who are not members of the union shall be required to pay a portion of the dues as provided. What does that mean? Or do we have members? that are not union members, if that, are, basically, that are under this contract? I, under, I don't currently, understand. we do not. But if we hired somebody into a position that's covered by the union, um, and they choose not to be a part of the union, because the union goes through the process of negotiating the contracts and things of that nature, um, they're still required to pay an agency fee, basically. So I think it's like 75. I'm guessing here, but uh, I've seen it sometimes like 75% of the fee. You, know, you actually had somebody, Richard, one time. So, so basically, even if they don't, and I think it was eighty percent of their dues they would pay. And and they they set forth that amount um, per the person's salary that percentage. But that that's all the question I have so far. Okay. Uh, page fourteen. Page fourteen. Um, the vacation schedule uh, was changed to be consistent with civil service uh, because in the past we didn't have civil service. Um, there was one change that was uh, tweaked at the last minute where we had three senior employees that had been here for an extensive period of time and they were grandfathered in on an extra week of vacation because of the fact that they've had it for so long. Is that section five of part, Article C, section five? Uh, it's, I think it yes, where you yes. put the three right. names in? Yes, the three names. You do have June's name is Jane. Is that another problem? <laughs> yes, you. June should be, it should be June. It's, it's June, not Jane. And I, I That's why we all read them, right? Yes. I would think the typo just, uh, should be allowed. I don't think the union would be opposed to that. Yeah. yeah, you never know. Um, page 15. Page 15. Um, this 
So we have the three, Roberta, Roberta, it should be reverted to June, June and Anita. Anita. Contract that says this one shall be covered by provisions of civil service statutes and administrative code. Um, page 24, um, sick time is now consistent with uh, civil service standards. And, and actually, this we were, I think that the policy manual may have given new hires uh, five days up until maybe their, their tenth year or something of that nature. Civil service gives them one day per month for the first year, and then 15 days in anticipation of continued employment for each year thereafter. So then that time carries forward year to year without limit. Are all our employees civil service? Uh, we are all technically, we're all civil service employees. You would either be classified or unclassified, and then under the classified, you would either be competitive or non competitive. So all titles are. So does the procedure manual for the employees have to be changed to reflect this? Uh, the, the policy manual is, is not 100% consistent with all of our contracts. And that's something that we've, we've known and we, we've made, I guess, changes with regards to uh, GIF mandatory policies, things that could impact us on the bank statement side. And there are so many things that could have a sentence here or a sentence there that, that we almost need to, to, to take them one at a time and, and down with each one and look through it. Well, see. which document supersedes the other? Uh, I Does would the contract supersede the procedure manual? Civil service. A actually, it depends mm -hmm. on if, whether it's correct or not. If there's an inconsistency in there, then it would be based on, on the law. Civil service. Civil service. So, on civil service. I mean, we talked about that, and we've started, right. which is correct. In the past three years, we've made a lot of amendments to the policy and procedure. Right. But, uh, and most of them have been directed by our insurance carrier. Uh, civil service is, you know, obviously been new to the borough, and, and you can see we're still fixing contracts. So we've had contracts that were still prior to yeah, and they were contradicting civil service. So this is one of the last ones uh, that needs to be brought in. And then I think at this point, once we have all the contracts done, then we can do a, yeah, we a, fix our policies, a revise, revise, the policy and we just match it. Be, not that it's going to matter. Like we said, most people, they're all civil service employees. We do have one class. Item was on page 32. And that is uh, basically references to chapter 78 grids uh, for, for employee shares on contributions for health benefits. Page 33. And that's the law, so we had. Correct. Uh, on, and that same law on page 33 changed the opt-out. What was that? On page 33, um, if, if you have other coverage, you can opt out of your front of me coverage and get, get reimbursed, reimbursed uh, for a lesser of 25% of cost savings or $5,000, whichever is lower. That was part of Chapter 78's law? Yeah. But it was done. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the law existed it, before. I yeah, think it was tweaked I was just to yeah, a degree. It was, I do yes. know people that took advantage of that. Correct. It was tweaked a bit based on Chapter 78. Though. I think that basically it says should both the employees and the insured be, you know, both have state health benefits that the employees should not be entitled to receive. You can't double dip through state health benefits. Plan, but we don't have a state health benefits plan. So. Uh, on page 34, um, section D, uh, a retired employee who has attained the age of 65 shall be responsible to obtain Medicare Part B at their own expense. At that point, the employer's health care coverage shall be deemed secondary coverage. Uh, in the, uh, as just a comment, uh, as fund commissioner, I was informed that all of New Jersey, under the health insurance funds, have decided to go with a supplement for the Medicare Advantage. And that will kick in sometime around the end of June. And 
they will only get one card. They won't use the two cards. They won't use the Medicare card, and they won't use the HIP card. They will get one Medicare Advantage card, and that's for everyone over 65. And I believe I talked with you, Joyce, and they, you said there's about 10 that it would affect. I forget what it was exactly, yeah. 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 That, that's the news from the HIP. This is being consistent with all of other, our other unions and contracts. This has become pretty standard for our employees. Uh, outside of the Food Pass Act right now, this, this language has been consistent. Uh, page 42. Consultation section uh, for 1111 to 123111. Uh, there was a zero for the increase for that period of time. Uh, 1112 through 123112 was a 2% increase. Uh, for 1113 to 123113, a 2% increase. And consistent with the extension we did for the police department. Uh, which takes us to the end of the Chapter 78 grids and the health care contributions the, for that law. Uh, we did an 18 month period from 1114 to 630. 630? It should be 630. Um, a 3% increase. And that averages the 2% for red. What was that? That, that average one? It averages the 2% for, the, for an 18 month period. Oh, you get the extra. For, and that was something that then, when we renegotiated the side agreement with the police department, that they were pretty strong, but they wanted to line up with that. So we worked with the other two units also. Um, and I can bring it out, but I don't have it in front of me. But uh, the 2% increase uh, amounts to about, uh, I think, uh, 20, uh, about 4,600. The whole unit for the for so that, yeah. that's what, it, what, what was that? Forty six hundred. About forty six hundred for the employees in the unit. For, for, for the whole. All for, for each of each. each the, no, yeah, not total. Zero, but for, two, two, and just for two percent. Forty six hundred. Forty six hundred per two, year. Two percent is forty six. Two percent of the salary. I had a spreadsheet, but it's okay. on the top of your side. So, so each year it's four thousand dollars. Well, the point I think is Rich is making is we owe forty six hundred from two thousand twelve because it's going to be retro. Right. Then moving forward in 2013, we have to budget approximately another 4,600. Correct. And then in the following year, we'll have to budget 4,600, yeah, and then it goes, you know, it's going up a little bit. Right, it'll be, it'll be probably six, so. And that was without compounding, compounding, so it's about $15,000 per cost of the bill. This unit doesn't, it's not the unit. Right. I want to give an example. A person is not going to be, somebody gave you uh, $10 an hour. This is only a, a, a 20 cent raise. So these are, these are, these are very. Each year, 20 each cent raise. Each year, 20. Yeah. 20 that's, that's, that's not a whole lot. Yeah. yeah, these are, you know. 4,600, that's for the whole group. That's the whole 10 that's employees. Whole, yeah, oh, I see. That's for the whole group. Yes, it's the whole group. Right. And you have people along that whole span where we have some high, obviously, higher. Uh, on page 44, it's just a period of contract. We'll go from January 1st, 2011 to 2013. Richard, um, what is the public safety committee? Is that the one where you meet and do the John Seville thing, you know, the, the, the forms that he has for each department for the GIF? Is that what that comes under, the GIF? No, this, this public safety committee is, uh, is, is in all the contracts. It's the one that you, you wrote the memo on. Yes. Uh, and it, it's a standard labor uh, item in there. And um, what, what is actually discussed with that? Is there, uh, is there if, a format? If there, well, to use a very vivid example, if you were operating in, in, a, in a machine shop and there were fire exit doors and, and 
and there was so it's an environmental thing, right? That, that's where that's where you'd see it normally for that type of an activity or for or work. You know, all the vehicles that the employees were driving had the brakes and they weren't being repaired. They were bringing those safety well, certainly issues. Certainly, that's a GIF issue, isn't it? Well, no, this is an opportunity for the did, yeah, but this unit is from a contract point of view. So, did the contract about the unit about five days to talk to them, right? To address any safety issues. It's not, issues it's, not it's not a great session. It's not a great session. I can't say that it wouldn't be presented that way, but the purpose is to make an unsafe environment safe before something happens. I when when that. Seville and the safety committee comes in, a lot of times that's after the fact. So, oh. so this, unless you're doing your, your pre meetings. Uh, yeah, Seville usually isn't here for our safety meetings. It's only uh, Fred, a member of the police department. Well, and yeah. Can have the safety but John meeting. was here. He did come that night. Oh, they do inspections. Yes, they Normally do. Normally just yeah. us that are here. And then he did inspections too. Correct. Right. Right. And we, did, we passed with flying cars. Well, we have those meetings every quarter. John's normally not here. I thought he'd be more. Yeah, he'd be here. Yeah. So that, that's the problem. Uh, the, the one other change that was in there, um, and I'm sorry I forgot to mention under the, the, the sick leave changes. Uh, one of the things that we've been what working on. That basically, uh, if you present a doctor's note that says that you're incapable of performing your duties, that you'll be placed on major illness uh, for a period of up to 90 days. Um, you must apply for workers' comp or state disability during that period of time, uh, which is then endorsed back over to the borough when those checks come in. But you do not utilize time during that period. So if you had if you had 100 hours of sick time on the books, you know, basically your sick time would be frozen, although that's a bad example. I should say if you had 15 days of sick time on the books, your sick time would be frozen in the past, and you would go on major illness as long as you had that So you doctor. could still use those 15 days? You could use, use them, in a, you could use them in the future, correct. Yeah. Uh, but the old contracts and the old policy in the borough before civil service was that it expired at the end of the year. Under civil service, your sick time goes from year to year without limit. So in theory, you could not be sick for a long period of time, and you could have the 100 hours on the books, and then you would come in with the doctor's note and say, but well. But it's understood that when that person should retire, that sick leave is not payable. The, sick, the sick leave is not payable, but there are instances where it could be used in the future. I think what, what, this, what the contract does and the change that's in here is that it's reversed now. So it's not really a harm to the employee, and it, it's, it's, it's more difficult to uh, use it for lack of a better phrase and, and we've had issues from time to time with employees in, in all units uh, most units I should say all units where they would be on major illness and you know they would use their time it was you know they were just on leave a lot and it was the, so basically what this does is you will use your sick time first with a floor of five days so say in the beginning of the year you're sick you use your sick time then you go on major illness until you're better um, there's a floor of five days, so if you were sick later in the year, you still have those five days left, and then in the next year, you'll get another lot of time. But basically, it just prevents you from, and it, it's, I haven't seen it often. There are other places to have it, but it's very rare where you're just on paid medical leave without having it in charge. So I think it was, it was fair to both sides. To, yeah, I think to the, the previous councils have started to move in this direction because major illness, I mean, it hurts the borough. There's no incentive for an employee to come basically getting 100% of their paycheck, whereas workman's comp or even disability pays only a percentage, correct? It's 70, 75%. And then they were still keeping all their sick days and keeping all this other kind of stuff. So this way, it, it, you know, now that we're a civil service com uh, community, their sick days don't expire, so they can use them in case they ever did get sick. And um, I think the future is for us to try to eliminate this major illness clause. Major illness, I think, came about 30 years ago wasn't the work disability work I'm not jumping in too much, but I, I think it's great. I think that the council and the public needs to know that this is something that right. is, is at a, you know, a great disadvantage. You know, we, we are getting back a partial check, but once again, you know, there should be an incentive to come back to work. You shouldn't be getting no paycheck, especially when workman's compensation and disability have caps. You know, why are they limiting it, and yet we're not? And there's no cap, and, and it, 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 
it makes it very difficult on us because we're well, paying for employees not here. In future contracts, I think we can negotiate. We can keep working. This, this has been uh, this has been major. I mean, no pun intended, but you know, the, this movement on this uh, I think is very big. I think that they understood the situation. They understood some instances that we were referring to, and this flip flop made it a little fairer um, for both sides. Uh, that, that's basically the, the, the main changes. In. Okay. Are there any other questions? I do not have any more. Anybody? Uh, what's the question? Before me, under the second interview. Page, what page, no sick time, page 24. No sick time shall be accumulated for the years 2011 and 12. The right to accumulate sick time shall commence on January 1st, 2013. You know, if you want to take that, I mean, I was under the impression that there's, that there's, most employees have already used those days. Uh, you know. What does that mean? Or past those years. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. Okay. It was something that was negotiated. It was, it was part of the, the back and forth that we've been in with the, the time over the past. Uh, I well, guess we've been six negotiating or seven this for what, about yes. a year? Yes. The, the last seven or eight months had to do with the, the tweak with the, the employees that we do recognize that have been here for, for, you know, for such, have such tenure with us that it would really be unfair to say, well, because civil service says that you're capped, you know, you're going to lose. 10 days at a time. So, yes. so they, they, because everybody else kind of lost five days. And, and that, you know, it, it is kind of a loss when you look at it. I mean, it was negotiated, but so uh, we felt that it was still fair and consistent with what we did with the other unit because that time, you know, averaged around this number of days. So. And there wasn't any accumulated sick time, really, for the unit, correct? Uh, I don't have that right. Right. but I know that, that most of the time was used. Was used. Um, if there's nothing else for this, I'd like to make a, a motion uh, on the resolution 1382, the resolution of approving the contract with the Office Day of CWA 1034. I so move that we approve the contract with CWA with the correction. I don't know if we want to put... is wrong on that one spot. Does that matter? I think we'll... Uh, I think that the, the corrections we need to be made are our, our typographic. I don't think we, we don't want to make it, you know, so then we have to bring it back again. I think it's important that we, you know, there's June versus June. I think we can say that the corrections noted. Okay, we noted. We noted, we noted the corrections. We have a second? I, I moved up on one. I put them on one. I second that motion. Okay, roll call. Mr. Claus? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. White? Yes. Five eyes, one eyes. Okay, motion is so we now can authorize the mayor to sign the contract. Um, this portion of the meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward to your name and address. Seeing no one, uh, can I have a motion to close the public portion? I make a motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. At